Hello everybody, welcome to Josie's Art School episode number 198. Oh my gosh, can you believe we are almost at 200 art lessons on this channel? I am so excited for that. I'm so excited for you because if this is your first time here, guess what? You have 197 other art lessons to go check out if you want to, all right? So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification button so that you can get all the videos once they download immediately. I put um, videos up at least two times, many times, three times a week. So you will get all of your creative juju going all week long, right? All right, well, thank you for coming by. Uh, we are creating jellyfish today. Uh, those of you who have purchased the art kits, welcome. You will be doing the, uh, the drawing that you have in your kit. Um, if you wanna hear all about that, go down to the links below and I share all this as well as there's a video here for you to find it um, and get more information about it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First, I'd like to show you some examples. This is on eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper of how amazing your jellyfish could look if you get really brave and very colorful. Uh, this is what you can create. You don't have to. It's whatever you feel like doing because it is your creation. Now I'm going to be working on an 11 by 14 piece of paper so that it's large enough for you to see it on your screen. Okay. Um, the first thing I always like to do is I like to break it down my paper in quadrants. So four quadrants. Um, I don't get really picky about how even it is, but I do like to go down the middle both ways just so I have a sense where I'm going to put everything on my drawing. Okay, you don't have to do that. When I'm drawing, I'm going to be using, I usually use either a Sharpie or a black pen. Today I'm using oil pastel because I'm being really inspired to use oil pastel lately. So if you have oil pastels and you haven't really used them for a while, go get them because I'm telling you, you will have so much fun with them. Many people say, oh, it's just like a crayon. I mean, it is. I mean, it does similar things, but I just feel like it's more vibrant with an oil pastel. Plus, you can do some great blending techniques with using a piece of Kleenex or using a cotton swab, and you don't really get those kind of effects using just a regular crayon. So for today, I'm going to be using oil pastels. I'm going to use watercolor paint. I also have crayons handy. Um, the oil pastels I'm really, really into right now, <laughs> I can't find the cover of it, oh, there it is, um, is this brand right here. I think I got them at my local Michael store, Cray Paws. Really love them. They're nice and bright, and they're very thick as opposed to the other ones that I've been using. So it just really feels good in your hand as well. And they've got lots of great colors if you wanna check them out. And then today I'm actually gonna blend in some, um, uh, some acrylic paint. So this one is called Laguna. Doesn't that seem appropriate for the sea? And then I have some sage green, which I'm really just loving lately. Both of these, well, this is Apple Barrel. This is Craft Smart. I'm sure that I bought these at Michael's or maybe even at a Walmart in my area. And then Snow White. So those are there just for me to play with. I like to have different um, thing uh, supplies in front of me just in case I'm inspired to add some different colors. And that's what you'll notice here as well. There's so many different colors here. And a lot of the blending comes from using oil pastel pastels and tempera paints and even markers if you have those on hand. And then I do sometimes like to go around and trace everything with like a black pen. So that's another idea for you if you really want to make all of your items pop off the page. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you have the art kits, you're going to be working on an 8x10 um, canvas panel, but you know what? You have the instructions right there in front of you. So if you want to practice on a regular piece of paper and then do it later on your canvas panel, go ahead and do that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do after I've created my quadrants is I'm going to do different types of shapes that are going to represent my jellyfish. So the first one is just going to be kind of a curved line, almost like a frown. And then in the second one, I'm gonna do one just a little bit smaller in dimension. The third one, I'm actually gonna make it a little bit wider. 
And then the fourth one, I'm actually going to put it in another direction. So you can see how I can get really playful with that. If you've ever seen those finish the drawing type things, it's kind of what this looks like. So that way it doesn't box you in and, and so, so it doesn't make it so boring that every jellyfish looks exactly the same. This kind of challenges you to not do that, right? All right, so I'm going to make this one almost look like a hat. That's going to be jellyfish number one. And then this one, I'm actually going to draw an oval so it looks like you're looking underneath the jellyfish. And then from here, this one's going to be kind of like a 10-gallon hat, like a cowboy hat. And then number four, if you are of a certain age, you might remember something called a hamburglar. I'm going to make that one kind of look like that. All right, so there's my four shapes. And from those shapes, that's where I'm going to create my jellyfish. All right, so again, I'm going to get a bit creative. And you can see there's lots of different ways you can do this. You see how we've added colors in later, you know, just using your markers. So you can do that if you want to. I'm going to keep it pretty basic just so you have like just a standard idea of what you could do. Because sometimes people get a little bit nervous of going all the way out there. So I want to give you something to look at. And then you can get inspired to do something else if you want to. So then from here, I'm just going to add some lines, okay? So that's the body of jellyfish number one. Okay, jellyfish number two, I'm going to add another line here, and then I'm going to make some circles in one part, and then I'm going to make some ovals in the other part. So again, giving my eye some interest as I'm looking at it. Next, I'm going to make some scalloped lines here. Okay, and then finally, I'm almost going to take like the, the inspiration of maybe a crown. So I'm going to put a little band here in the middle. I'm going to add some circles there. And then I'm going to start to make lines that go in opposite directions to finish that out. Okay, so as you can see right now, that's my basis for those jellyfish, and then I'm going to kind of go from here. So now I can make the legs of the jellyfish, you know, kind of that looping lines, right? You can do that on a few different ways and a few different areas. So you can make thin ones and you can make thick ones. Almost looks like streamers, right? You can do the same thing here, and they can go in another direction, so it's moving maybe in another direction. So here's mine, I'm doing actually some swirly lines here. And then above the top, I'm probably gonna go in another direction. So that's two of them. This one, I'm kind of have it emulate almost like squid legs. And then down here, I'm going to make it look almost like a windsock. So they're going to overlap each other. All right, that's going to be fun to color, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so from there, those are my four jellyfish. They're kind of playing with each other, aren't they? All right, so here is kind of your basis for your jellyfish. And then you can go ahead and start creating almost like a wave pool of some sort where they're kind of floating just below the water, right? And then in this one, it almost looks a bit like it's in the galaxy. So that's, you just use your colors in different ways to create that. You could actually have some seaweed coming up if you wanted to. Okay, but that's kind of the basis for my uh, my jellyfish drawing. Now, what I will say if, is if you want to do kind of an ombre look, right, what I would suggest you do is maybe take a pencil and draw just some lines, you know, going in different directions. I wouldn't do more than two lines. And then that way that gives you a sense of, okay, right here I want blue, and then maybe here I want purple, and then right here I want red. Okay, all right, so now that you've had this all set up, now we're going to start with the coloring process. And as I always say, I 
encourage you always to go a little more bold than you would normally want to. Um, because I think that just kind of invites you in to play and take more risk with your drawings. Now, if this is just simply, I just want to relax, I already have an idea of how I want to paint this, then feel free to do that. And you can live vicarious through me as I make some bold choices here. So I'm going to go ahead and start right out from the gate. And I'm going to start to add some orange. Okay. And then from here, I kind of wish I would have brought my marker so you can kind of see what you can see here in the example. I do have a purple Sharpie, so maybe I'll do that so you can kind of see how you can get really creative with your Sharpies, right? So here I am making colors in one direction here, and if I had another Sharpie, I'd probably go in a different direction with another color. I think what I'm going to do to kind of emulate that is I'm going to use my sage green paint and maybe do something a little bit different like lines going in between those purple circles, right? So already you can see that I have taken my drawing and I've taken it in a different direction than where I started. And there's nothing like just doing that, not being afraid, and then just seeing where the muse, as they like to say, takes you. Right, so I have some sage green on my, my uh, paintbrush already, so I'm just going to find ways that I can use it without wasting it, right? So I'm just going to go in a few different areas. And, you know, I just play, play with color. I can honestly tell you, I don't remember a time when I have seen Oh, I take that back. I've probably seen them at aquariums, like sea life aquarium, you know? It just feels like it's been such a long time since I've seen a jellyfish up close and personal. All right, so from here, I can start to play a little bit even with the color in my, my watercolor paint. So if I'm gonna do something similar to this, I'll start to add the red here. Now, it's gonna be a little interesting because it's on a wall. So I don't want my paint to drip. But there we are. And as you can see, it just continues to brighten up the whole atmosphere as I add vibrant colors to what I'm doing. And this might be something where you might put a little bit of color down and then maybe go, you know, watch a show or eat some dinner and then come back and, you know, see what you see with fresh eyes and that might inspire you to add more color. I think the key here is to do what makes you feel relaxed and happy. In no way should your creativity be causing you stress. <laughs> should put that on some sort of bumper sticker somewhere. If your creativity is stressing you out, you are doing it wrong. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We've added the red. I kind of want to keep going with the background and see if I can get it as powerfully bright as you see there in the examples because I really think that if you get that, the background, you know, really kind of popping off the page, then everything else in comparison will just complement what you've created. And I really like that. I like that feeling of creating something even more exciting than you thought it was going to be, you know. And that's why I kind of pick... Um, drawings where when you see on the video, oh, she's painting a jellyfish. <laughs> well, yes, I am painting a jellyfish, but it's way more than that. It's really about, and this is kind of my philosophy on this whole thing, if I pick something that's not too, I guess, out of your comfort zone in the sense that you don't like get held back because you feel like you can't draw it, then just maybe you can use this as a way 
to just relax and unwind and enjoy the process. Because how many areas in our lives that we just have to do it because we have to do it, right? Can't there be some place where there's just some ease? And I submit to you that painting and drawing can be that place for you. And I hope you agree. So as I mentioned um, at the beginning of this video, I do have art kits and art journal kits and sewing kits that are pre-made that you can purchase from me. And like, for example, with the art kits, you can, in the kit, have three different designs um, that I then draw with you, paint with you over here on YouTube. But not only that, you'll already have the canvas and the paint and the and a, um, a template of a color wheel and uh, paint brushes, a pencil, like pretty much everything you need. You just get the box out, turn on the video and start painting with me. So again, trying to make it as easy as possible for you to just take away all the obstacles and just enjoy the creating process, the creative process. I also have art journal kits if you're ever interested in trying that. Again, making it very easy, beginner friendly. Everything is in the kit for you to get started. Um, and I have videos for that as well. And then finally, I have sewing kits. So you can either hand sew or machine sew. Very easy. Um, can have it done within about two hours and again just something that you can just pick up you can do it while you're waiting in car line you can do it while you're waiting on a doctor's appointment obviously if you're if you're using your sewing machine you won't be able to do that but even with the art journal kits you can actually take that with you and do it on the go so everything that I create really is with that mindset of making it so that there's the least amount of resistance for you to have a creative practice. Because for me, I did not have a creative practice until I was, you guys, I'm 52 now. It wasn't until I was about, I wanna say for my first art journal kit I did, or my art journaling, I did maybe about eight years ago. And again, I was so overwhelmed when you see some of the videos when they've got all the paints and the inks and, and the person can draw really well and just all those things. And I'm like, yeah, I won't be doing that. And so I found my way on how to do it on my own. And then this year, I finally figured out a way to share it with the world. So I'm pretty pleased about that. And you can get actually a free template of that over on my website. All right, so let me see. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of green up here just for interest, you know, just to bend, finish it out. And then as you can see, already I've made my vibrant background, which then allows me to just come back and play with what I'm gonna do with my jellyfish, right? I've just recently starting, starting to just draw with an oil pastel rather than a pencil. And I really actually am loving the results of that because already without me doing anything, it almost looks like a finished product, right? All right, so I think from here, I'm gonna use a little bit more of my oil pastels, add a little bit of red. And I think I might have mentioned this before. The reason why I'm really starting to appreciate oil pastels more is because of the blending feature that they have. So if you have not used them before, I would encourage you to do that. Here is my cotton swab. So here I have all this white space, right? And rather than working so hard to fill that white space in, you just take your Q-tip and you blend it as much or as little as you like. So it does a lot of the work for you. And I love that. 
All right, so let me add a little bit more down here. Put it more back here, actually. Now, don't forget, you want to add some movement to the leg. So even though I drew everything in black, I really want to go back and add some color to the legs. So again, I've used my red. Now I'm going to blend it in a little bit. Now I might let some of the black do some of the work for me, but I don't want it to do all the work for me. Let me see if I can use this pink in an interesting way. I um, have mentioned that I teach art to kids and a lot of times I take my own supplies when I do that. And there are certain colors never fail by the time we're done with whatever the art class is, the, um, those colors are pretty non-existent. And can you guess pink is one of them? <laughs> of course, but that's okay. As long as they're enjoying the process. All right, so I'm gonna add a little pink. I don't think I like that next to the red because it's too close. So I think maybe I'll put some in here. So I just wanna encourage you, you don't ever have to feel rushed by my drawing, my painting. Um, I do it so I can have, a, you can have a full beginning to end experience with what it is that I'm drawing, but you can always, you know, stop the video, fast forward the video, rewind the video, whatever you need to do based on what your commitments are for the day. So I'm gonna add a little bit of orange there, a little bit of orange right here. Okay, now I did show you that I have this gorgeous Laguna color of my oil, of my acrylic paints. And so I do not want to forget to use that. Again, do you get like this where there's some colors and all of a sudden it's like your favorite color for a while? This Laguna has been really speaking to me lately. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Now, if I had my Sharpies with me, I would definitely come back through and I would probably add some dots just over the top of some of these spots, just again to bring just a little more design to what it is that I'm doing. And as you can see, as I'm painting, what I'm doing is I'll choose a spot where I'm gonna add a color but then I want to go around the painting and add it in different areas of the painting so it doesn't just look like a pop of color somewhere and it makes really no sense to the eye. Now, of course, you probably see it more prevalent than me because I'm a bit close to the painting, but up on the screen, on your screen, you can see whether or not I'm being successful with this idea or not. All right, so here I am. I did a, kind of a swirly line here, and so I'm doing the same thing with the paint, and hopefully that will read well when it dries. Because again, the key is, is not what it looks like when it's wet, but what it looks like when you walk away and come back and take a look at it, yeah? Because believe it or not, the um, supplies work together as they dry. And you probably know this if you've ever done any pottery painting, how you paint it and then they put it, they fire it in the kiln and they put the glaze on it and you come back and it's like, oh, that's what it looks like. And any sort of imperfections, those show up um, uh, when you get your pottery piece back. Well, I actually feel like the opposite happens when you, um, when you paint. Sometimes you see all of what you think are imperfections, but when you walk away and your eyes kind of don't go right to where you think something hasn't been drawn or painted properly, you actually lose the sense of where that's at because everything starts to work together, which is a pretty amazing thing. All right, I'm gonna add in a little bit of gray in here. Again, just to add a little bit of interest. Go all around. And as you can see, I really do like to play. And that's the thing I love about doing these videos with you because I want to encourage you to play on your um, canvas, on your paper. 
Um, and so I do it as well. I want to definitely set that example for you. Okay, I think I'm going to add a little bit more. I talked about this on another video, that I do love to leave white on my um, paintings, kind of a, as a, um, like a statement, you know, that I did want to leave this white. But I find that it makes a stronger statement if I actually color or paint it in with actual white rather than just leaving the paper white. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm actually bringing in my white uh, acrylic paint. I believe it's the, the Apple Barrel brand and it's called Snow White. But can you see that I'm just adding this in and it just brings a little more interest Subtle, perhaps, but you definitely can feel that that looks much different than just leaving the paper white, right? At least I hope you can see that. So even around where I left around the uh, purple circles, some white, I'm actually just going around it with my paintbrush. So I'm leaving some of the circles, but I'm not making it so perfect looking, right? All right, and then what I might do is I'm just gonna swir swirl a little bit of it into my background. Again, that makes it blend a little more rather than having this strict line of here's where the blue starts, here's where the purple starts, here's where the red starts, right? So it just gives it a more natural look. All right, you guys, I am super happy with how it came out. I hope you are enjoying how yours has come out. Thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure and like and share my videos. So happy that you come and paint with me. You can hit the notification bell and please subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again back here soon. I do videos two times, sometimes three times a week. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll know exactly when I have uploaded the video. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.